Today I've got the 2020 Ram 2500 Power Wagon and I'm going to show you what makes this a special heavy duty off-road truck and why it's an awesome daily driver. As you can see I definitely had some fun with this truck. I will show you what it looks like clean, give you a full detailed review of the exterior, the interior, even some driving and off-roading impressions. Let's get started. So starting out under the hood there's still a lot to like about it but there is one big drawback. So first of all, one thing that I like is this push rod 6.4 liter Hemi V8 engine with 410 horsepower and 429 pound-feet of torque. Now peak torque comes out at 4,000 RPMs and a good amount still comes out before that. So you should be able to have some decent, you know, towing capability while you're doing this. Comes with an eight speed automatic transmission. Now one big drawback is that you cannot get the Cummins diesel engine. This gas engine is all you get and Ram says that's because of the extra weight, about a thousand extra pounds that would be put in the front of the vehicle that would definitely throw off its capability with its off-road uh, prowess. Conventional towing is rated at 10,500 plus pounds, which is significantly less than other heavy duty trucks, but considering its off-road capability and its suspension setup, that's what you get. This Hemi V8 does have a nice sounding engine and exhaust and we'll listen to that a little bit later. Now as we go through the exterior and suspension details, this is where this truck gets really special. So first of all, starting right out front, we do have LED headlights, LED daytime running lights. I really like this accent strip lighting right here that looks pretty good and LED fog lights down below. I like how Ram has Ram written all the way across the grill. It's kind of a big signature grill right there. Plus you've got a powder coated front bumper so this bumper can definitely take a beating another big deal is that you get a 12,000 pound winch right in the front in between your tow hooks so that can be really handy and it comes standard on this truck and then one of the biggest things that sets this apart from other off-road competition is that you actually have an electronic locking front differential so it's not just a limited slip plus it actually has a disconnecting sway bar so you can get a lot of wheel travel to help give you the maximum ground clearance on this front end. Plus you get a very respectable 29 and a half inch um, approach angle. Aside from that, you can even get a two-tone color option and we have the Hydro Blue Pearl with black two-tone. And this looks really cool. This is a really bright, vibrant color on here. You've got big fender flares that go over these 17 inch wheels. It really completes the look with these 33 inch Wrangler Dirt Track all-terrain tires as well. And we even have the optional black tube steps, which probably are not the best for an off-road truck. The Ram Power Wagon is also 239 inches long with a couple of skid plates underneath, a locking rear axle, just like the front, Bilstein gas charge shocks, and 14.2 inches of running clearance, although quite a bit less of actual axle ground clearance, but it can still ford 30 inches of water then you'll get LED brake lights with the powder coated bumper in the back and it's gonna give you a 26 degree departure angle. Now as we move to the bed of the truck, one feature that you can get if you want is the Ram box, which is a lockable storage bin on each side of the truck. It basically deletes the area inside the bed where you have the wheel wells before and after. You even get a 115 volt plug-in back here, which could be very handy. Plus each side has a light. And did I mention that it's also lockable? So that's really nice. Now to get into the bed of the truck, you've got a little uh, bumper step that you can push out right there. So that works well. You can just pop it out, step up real easily. Plus from here, you can open up the tailgate with your key fob. Uh, you can push a button or you've got a touch pad back there to open this up. And this is a six foot, four inch box. It does have the optional spray in bed liner. We have the spare tire underneath the bed. You got four adjustable cargo tie downs that can move the length of the box, which is really handy as well. Plus we've got the optional tri-fold tunnel cover. The bed is also very well illuminated with LED lights on both sides and the cab mounted light. And just like with the towing numbers that I told you earlier, this is where you're really gonna sacrifice in terms of payload. So again, I saw multiple numbers from different sources on payload numbers, so I'll give you the highest. Payload, 1,560 pounds. That's Honda Ridgeline status, but that's what you get with an off-road type of vehicle like this. The Tremor has significantly more, but this has way more than the Ford Raptor. So again, off-road capable to the max, but towing and payload is the sacrifice. Now here's Ram's key fob. You can open up your tailgate. You do have the optional remote start on here. It says Ram on the back. And one thing that I thought was pretty cool. So it is a sensor on the back and it's even a little bit cleaner right now, but there was dirt 
caked on the back of this. I wedged my hand in there and it's still unlocked. So that sensor still worked covered in dirt. Plus you even get approach lighting coming from the mirrors. And one more thing, I believe the cameras on some other vehicles are in different spots, but the camera's right there for our surround view camera that I'll show you in a little bit. I never had to wipe that off because I could still see. So I don't know if they thought about placement, but it works. As you hop into the front seat of the Ram, you're gonna get a leather bench seat with a folding armrest, which is kind of nice to see in a truck because you don't always see that anymore. So we've got eight-way power adjustable seats with two-way lumbar support. They even have the entry exit system to where the seat will move. The steering wheel does not move though. It's only a tilt adjustment instead of telescoping. Aside from that, these seats are comfortable. They are pretty soft. They've got some mild, moderate bolstering around them. And at five foot nine, I feel like I have a lot of room in here as I do with every vehicle, but over six footers, I think you'll fit in here just fine. These seats also have the optional heating, ventilation, and memory settings. Aside from that, taller, short passengers, you have adjustable pedals to where you can move the pedals closer or further away. Like I said, the steering wheel is only tilt adjustable, which is kind of a bummer. Uh, it's still in a pretty good spot for me, but I know my wife, if she was driving, she would want to pull the steering wheel out. But at least this steering wheel is heated, and that's an option. Now, when you hop inside the power wagon, you can have it be a little more utilitarian, or you can have it be a little fancier and a little more plush like what we have right here. It's a balance of modern with practicality in a truck sense. Now, to start things off, you've got push button start, put on the brake. And to start over on the door, so this upper portion is a softer material. Got a nice soft armrest, good grab handle. I like the big door handle here as well. Memory settings for the doors and then the front windows are one touch automatic. Right below you've got a couple little knick-knack cubbies. Not really a dedicated bottle holder, but it works just fine and good storage. Now these are power folding mirrors out here and you do have the towing mirror, kind of the heavy duty mirror. You can power move both the inner and the outer portion. You can fold them from inside, but they don't automatically fold when you shut the vehicle off. And here is Ram steering wheel. It is a leather wrapped steering wheel that is also heated. You've got your information and voice controls here, and then your radar cruise control stuff over here. Uh, plus on the back of the steering wheel, you can control your, inf not your information, but your actual radio and media settings. You do have rain sensing windshield wipers on here. And then right here, you have a couple of large physical gauges on each side, plus a couple small ones inside of there. And then you've got your information display in the middle. So with this information display, you've got a trip computer, obviously, an A and a B section. Don't pay attention to the MPG. That includes some of the off-roading, which obviously is not good. <laughs> but you, there's four different corners. So up there, the 101 degrees over there, and then the two bottom ones, you can change and customize what you have couple different temperature settings you can have your trip a compass whatever you want so it's kind of nice that you have four independent things you can see that 131 that's your range so that's always going to be there and then on the other side is how you scroll through using your steering wheel in order to look at all of your information so more trip computer fuel information any towing information and, and your trailer brake you can see on there right away music a lot of different stuff. You can uh, customize settings. You have to be stopped in order to do that. You can just have a speedometer as well. Another thing is when you are driving, there will be a speedometer right up at the top too, and you can customize that. So um, you can, it's nice also when I was off-roading that I could see uh, all the temperatures here. You can see your tire pressure and all that if you want to air down your tires going off-roading whatever you need. So lots of good information, driver assist features as well, like your radar cruise and lane keeping system. So it's maybe not the largest screen, but it does have a lot of useful information. Now, right away, let's talk about these, the shifter and the four x four controls. So this is the rotary dial shifter that you've seen in other FCA products. So to lock your axles, you can lock just the rear or the front in the rear, and then you can unlock the axles right here. Uh, I did have a little bit of trouble with it being responsive and actually doing it when I wanted to, to lock or unlock. Um, so that was a little bit annoying, but at least it's easy, you know, close to where your hand rests. And then downhill descent right there, and then to actually disconnect your sway bar. Now it will reconnect once you get to about 18 miles an hour, I believe, and it'll let you know on your information display what axles are locked and if your sway bar is disconnected. 
Just below that, you got a couple of USB ports and an auxiliary port and a USB type C as well. So two USB, two USB type C and an auxiliary port. And then believe it or not, you actually get a floor mounted four wheel drive shifter. That's kind of cool. You don't always see that. Just about everything now has a push button. Uh, so that's pretty interesting. And you've got a little storage cubby down there and I'm kind of doing this backwards, but we've got a water bottle, three different water bottle holders. They accommodate a wide variety of drinks. They are rubber lined right here, so I kind of wonder if that will wear out quickly, but you do have three of them. You have a really nice, soft, really soft actually, large armrest. You have one stage of storage where we actually have our uh, winch controls right there, coin holder, even another USB charging port right there. And then, of course, with the bench, you can have a sixth passenger sit right there or you can get this up out of the way and have an extra little storage bin so that's kind of almost like a little hidden storage cubby right there so that is nice lots of storage and then up here you have a little cubby right up above that's always nice to see with a 12 volt power outlet you've got your lane keeping system up there your hazards and then we have the optional 12 inch screen so this is the 12 inch touch screen as you can see, it is massive, goes up and down, kind of uh, portrait style. You do have some physical controls on the side, your AC controls over here for your passenger as well. So you have dual zone climate control. I like how you still get a physical volume knob, a tuning knob, and then down below, you've got your trailer brake controller, as well as your parking sensors, traction control, and tow haul mode button. Now with this screen, I, uh, this is my first time actually being able to spend time in an FCA vehicle. I like it and I don't like it. So I like how much you can see on here. Um, I don't like how the heated seats, ventilated seat buttons, kind of like the niceties, some controls you have to dig into there in order to do that. I just prefer real buttons, but let me show you something else. We have this surround view camera, which is really helpful when you're off-roading as well. You can access that even while you are driving at a low enough speed. Several different views on here. So that's fantastic. Even one where a camera can shine down in the bed of the truck. You can see your backup camera, sides of the vehicle, just a really great all around surround view camera. Now right here, we're in the media section. You can go to controls and that will pop up down here. Like for example, heated steering wheel, ventilated seats. You can even change your automatic dimming mirror, quickly access some of those cameras as well. And you can customize what you have down here. So if you want a different shortcut, you can do that. Like if we go to the Uconnect apps, you can see all of these different things, even another page to where you can have any of those shortcuts down at the bottom. Climate control stuff on here to where you can have the entire screen do that. You do also have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto and the Apple CarPlay, I'm not sure about Android Auto, but Apple CarPlay is only this top section. You cannot have it be the entire screen but you can have like your navigation going up here and then have something else down here. So for example, the media is down there. You can have your comfort settings or even your own truck navigation going down there as well. So you can kind of have a two-tone setup and the stereo system in here is a 17 speaker Harman Kardon sound system. It sounds nice, but it's not quite as bassy as I was expecting, but overall it doesn't take long to get used to this and it's really pretty fancy. Now, as we go over here, Ram gives you a two-tiered storage bin. So you've got that one. And then down below, you have a locking glove box as well. So that's good to see. Plus, there's a 115-volt plug-in right there. Up above, Ram gives you an automatic dimming rearview mirror, garage controls. You've got LED lights in here as well. And you've got a button to open up the rear window. But we do not have a moonroof in here. Not in the power wagon, but there's your rear window, and you can even open up the tailgate with a button right there. Now, when you hop into the back seats of the Ram, it's still a really big, spacious, and comfortable area. You've got a grab handle here for your back seat passengers as well. You've got this fold down armrest right here with a couple of cup holders. And right in front of us, we have a couple of fast charging USB ports. We've got a couple of AC vents, 115 volt plug in, and heated seats. My only complaint about that is that the AC vents are pretty much right at your feet and I had a couple people back here and you're not really getting a lot of direct air unless you move the front vents so people are having a hard time keeping cool back here. Now aside from the space and comfort, let's go ahead and check out what makes this back area pretty special. 
Now, as we look into the back seat, obviously I have a mess, gotta clean this up, but you saw how spacious it was. Just look how much room there is, how spacious it is. You do have a 60-40 fold and a couple different options here. Fold that up. First of all, you do have a light on the bottom of each seat. So at night, you have a little bit of light that can either shine when the seats are folded down or even when they're folded up. And then right here, you have a little storage bin. That's It's pretty small, but at least you do have one right there. That side has a subwoofer, so that's not really an underseat storage area. If you don't want the storage area and you want a flat load floor, you have to fold that out on each side because there is a small hump in the middle, but at least you have an option to get a flat floor. it's time to get this power wagon on the road so right off the bat my first impression of the power wagon is that uh, especially compared to other heavy-duty trucks is that it actually drives quite nice it feels almost you know a little softer more compliant it's still got a really nice ride height of course you sit up a little higher in the power wagon um, and it's just got a kind of a playful feel to it it feels a little bit lighter on its feet than I really expected in terms of acceleration just a little bit here. It's got a really nice sound and it's it's for the most part it's been pretty smooth. We'll talk about that transmission in a little bit. The braking feel is also about as expected for a heavy duty truck. It actually it actually feels pretty responsive. You know, more responsive than I was expecting for heavy duty. Now in this drive, I'm gonna tell you what it's like to live with the power wagon, driving it every day. Um, I'll show you some of the off-road at the very end. And this road has a lot of kind of broken pavement, ups and downs, Just give you a quick little idea of the ride comfort. Now, this is not a soft riding truck. Don't get that idea. But compared to other heavy duty trucks, it rides better than those. It's it's honestly it really surprised me now you do get some choppiness some jitteriness and bounciness on certain pavements but for the most part as a daily driver this is comfortable i i've enjoyed it i really can't complain about the ride comfort considering what class of vehicle we're driving so that's awesome let me go ahead and get on it here actually get on it that V8 just sounds great it really does sound sound nice now with this transmission so we have the 8-speed transmission and for the most part it's been quite smooth and really good there have been a couple of times where I have been slowing down and then I start to accelerate where there's a jolt a jerk and there have honestly been a lot of transmissions that I've driven recently that have done that but overall it's been really smooth it's been responsive especially when you are accelerating and this, this Hemi does a really nice job. While I'm sitting in place here, ergonomically, ergonomically, it's good. I'm definitely just not used to it yet. I'm not necessarily a huge fan of the screen. You do have to kind of dig a little bit for a couple of things. I mean, the screen is cool. It's definitely almost like a party trick, but we'll talk a little bit more about that in a second. We're gonna take a couple of turns and corners around here, and obviously this truck is not known for its on-road drivability but if you daily drive it it's good to know let's go ahead and get on it again just because I know a lot of you that want V8s love the sound of a V8 but as we uh, go around this corner my least favorite thing about driving the power wagon is how sloppy the steering is especially in comparison to well, it's kind of hard to compare, but I just got out of the Super Duty Tremor and I liked the weight of the steering and the connectedness. It's not a sports car, but the more connected feel of the steering wheel. At low speeds, the lightweight steering in the Power Wagon is great. It does good if you want to park. Um, Off-roading, fantastic. You can, you can you know, easily turn the wheel, get the wheels where you want them. 
but at higher speeds, especially on the highway or the interstate, I felt like I was constantly making little corrections here and there. You know, certainly not bad. I used to drive a 96 Ram and <laughs> that thing got beat to heck and I feel like this is just a little bit better than that in terms of the way that the steering responds. <laughs> so that's a bad example, but just, a, just an idea. Now on this stretch right here, I'm gonna go ahead and set the cruise on. We do have adaptive cruise control and there's nobody in front of me. I do have example videos with other brands of how that works to keep a, you know, a certain distance and pace behind the vehicle in front of you. This has done a good job with that. It also has the lane keeping system. So if I just kind of let myself veer, it's gonna knock me back into my lane. So you can turn that off or on. Of course, you don't have to use adaptive cruise. You don't have to use the lane keeping system. It also has a forward collision. Our mirrors have blind spot indicators. We've got front and rear parking sensors. So you've got a lot of the safety kind of driver assist tech uh, that you would expect or maybe even not expect. So at least you have it. Now this next stretch next to the cows here, we're gonna get on a road surface that brings a lot of noise into the cab. But in this power wagon, this is really quiet. This is a really quiet ride, especially on, you know, a rougher surface road like this. So in some cars, if you've listened to my other videos, you can hear a lot of noise. But in here, you don't hear much at all. The really the only time you get road noise is when you're at high speeds on the interstate and you can hear tire noise. We have laminated glass over here, so that's not an issue. You don't really get a lot of wind noise. So Ram has done a really nice job making this a quiet truck. And if you're traveling with this truck, going long distances, a quiet ride makes a big difference over a long trip. And back to the ergonomics daily driving. Um, I like where the four wheel drive controls, there's a locker controls and the four wheel drive shifter down here. It's all real close. But going through the screen for certain things, um, not my favorite, but it is really cool all the accessibility and connectivity and all of that that you get on that screen. Good storage cubbies underneath of this armrest as well. So overall, I mean, it's really easy to live with type of truck. Did get to take this power wagon off road, although it was nothing crazy or massive hill climbing or rock climbing, it was still fun. And we had a few different obstacles to try to use the truck uh, in certain situations. But the biggest takeaway after driving this off-road is that the ground clearance is great. It feels very light on its feet. Overall, I felt like I had great traction in this truck for the most part. The ground that I'm on is really soft, but uh, the approach angle, as you can see, is good going over just this little dirt area, even though we kind of push that dirt, dirt through. But um, in this next little bit, we had a good little ramp right there to kind of make sure the bumper didn't scrape and you had good approach angle good departure angle never had any issues scraping and then coming down this side we we're hoping that these little cliffs and steps would kind of help with the disengaged sway bar to really show you that wheel travel but the ground was just a little too soft to uh to really get a whole lot of wheel movement so it really seriously made it feel and look super easy and then we did have a, a couple areas where it was a little harder and you kind of got to really feel the the structure of the power wagon a little bit of twisting of the power wagon uh, definitely needed some ground clearance in some areas and that powder coated front bumper really comes in handy in certain situations if you just kind of want to push some dirt out of the way you don't have to worry about it being scratched or being beat up and there was never any issues with any little hills or any little obstacles or anything with this power wagon that really made it feel inferior to, to being off-road. Now, I did get into a soupy area, a much wetter area than I was expecting, and I did not have momentum. And as you can see, I got stuck pretty quick. A bunch of sand that just collected on my wheels, tried to back out, and then tried to ram it forward again, and just got stuck. So it's just the way it is. I didn't air down the tires really. Uh, hardly at all like I should have uh, so that's a big part of it but tried rocking front to back a little bit and I eventually just kind of dug myself into a hole but it was definitely fun to test out the front and back lockers 
Uh, put it in four high, four low, but ultimately this is what happened and I had to use a winch to get out. So to wrap things up on the power wagon, definitely fun, very good at slow rock crawling type of stuff. Hill climbing could be great. Uh, big obstacles, but it's just a fun truck to drive. That's, that's the main thing. It's not too big. It's not too stiff. It's still capable to tow and haul and pull stuff, but very capable off-road and tons of fun as well. So. so to wrap things up on this 2020 Power Wagon, you've got some serious off-road prowess, but aside from that, it's a really nice daily driver. It's not too big. It's not too stiff riding. It's comfortable. It's got a lot of space inside and you get some of the comfort and tech features that you might expect in different type of vehicles. The only drawback for me about this heavy duty power wagon is that it's not really a heavy duty capable type of truck in terms of towing and payload, but with that aside, going off road, possibly overlanding with this thing, this is a champ. I wanna give a big thank you to Ram and FCA for allowing me to review an FCA vehicle for the first time. Hopefully we get some more to show you guys. Be sure to watch some of these other videos and subscribe for weekly reviews. Have a great day.